not live yet. I think now we're live. Let me make sure everything is live. Doing well here. All right. So I want to thank everybody for joining us on episode 42, where we talk about how to build a relationship with your customers. Uh, we are joined with what's up, guys? <laughs> Dave is actually here, and we have Ryan. Go ahead, Ryan. Ryan, RPS done repair. What's going on? <clears throat> we're trying to see where. Okay, now we're up. Now we're up. Yeah, it's like a little pause in the beginning. We gotta make sure we're live. We're good. I think we're good now. So please, guys, let us know in the chat if uh, we get a little jittery and, and bad connection. This is kind of new for us with uh, two mics going and only two streams. So hopefully it's a little better for you guys this time around. But we'll see. Um, let's see. So we got some people in the chat. What's up, guys? So let's get started. I don't think we have any tools today. Um, uh, how to build a relationship with your customers. So let's talk about why that is important. I think, Ryan, you can definitely share some insight on that uh, with the business model that you have. It's just easier on day-to-day -day business at your shops. Um, the one thing that I've learned is get to know everybody in the, in the shop. So if you have a body shop, get to know the cleanup guy. You know, build those relationships with those cleanup guys and the estimators and the managers and the painters and the body guys. And um, for one, you, if somebody else does come in there, they're going to say, hey, uh, so-and-so stopped in. They dropped a card off. Or, hey, Joe was here fixing a dent. And then you know something's going on. If you don't have those relationships, they're not going to tell you. Um mm -hmm. The other thing that was really that was big helpful for me is it's pouring down rain outside. The only bay that's open is a cleanup guy's bay. If you don't have a relationship with him, he's going to be more standoffish instead of saying, "Yeah, just bring it in." So, get to know everybody on on all the lots, the mechanics. If you're at a dealership, the I mean, receptionist. The more you know, the better. Yeah, and so. I've been here since last Wednesday, guys, and um, the last uh, couple days I've been with Ryan, and the way that, you know, and we've said this before on the show, the way that he interacts with his accounts, if you guys haven't seen this, um, it's actually pretty uh, watch because you walk in and it feels like a family when RPS Debt Repair comes in. Um, everyone just, you know, smiles and, and laughs. Uh, loves you know Ryan and his whole team too. Um, everything about him, they know he does a good job. They know he's going to do the right thing. They know they're going to you know he's going to price it well. They know that he's going to deliver a quality product. But then at the end of the day too, they're all friends or, or you know they just really really like him as a person. And they will have conversations with him and try to keep him there even longer. Yeah, uh, he really you know wants to be, which can be you know sometimes an issue, but. Um, you know, he's built these relationships, which have, you know, he's kept these accounts for a very, very long time. And that's for a reason, because the people in them respect the company and Ryan so much. Um, so building these relationships uh, is really, really huge. And what we want to talk about is kind of how we got to, you know, go about that. Um, how do we go ahead and, and start to build these relationships? You're, you know, cold calling, walking down the walking down the street or driving down the road and, you know, hey, that's a nice body shop. It's kind of close to the house. You know, how can I get in there? Besides just walking and saying, hey, this is what I do. They saying, hey, we already have a guy and you turning around and walking away. There's some things that you kind of do to kind of uh, either keep that conversation going a little longer or go ahead and steer their mind or, you know, make, maybe make them think a little bit different for about a half a second or two or a second or two. And um, think about you know maybe using you as the company or you might be the better you know guy or the literature you gave them or your business card is nicer or your the material you gave them you know you can give them a four by eight postcard i know ryan has some of those as well um or your notepads were nicer you know a lot of these things that can kind of sway maybe their their um opinion on you know are we using the right company maybe there is a better company maybe there's a better option for us out there um, to help us with PDR. So we're kind of, you know, want to talk about that. 
Um, and you know, Ryan said is just build those relationships with everyone in the shop. And you know, how do you do that from step one? Like walking in, right? I mean, you know, how, how did some of these accounts come about? You know, I've gone into accounts and I've talked to the manager and hey, we have a guy, and I turn around and then I'm like, okay, well, why <laughs> didn't I like try to do anything else? What are some things that you maybe do if you were cold calling? Um, to a new account, how do you like break that stigma of just turning around and walking away? Trying to relate. <clears throat> so I, I'm pretty good oh, at I'm pretty good at reading people, you know. And you, and you go in this manager's office and you're looking on the walls really fast, or what is business cards are sitting in? If it's a golf tee, mm -hmm. if it's a mm -hmm. a bear, you know, are what you a hunter? Are you a fisher? Into the shop. How are you getting your way into the? You know, maybe he's in the back. You gotta go through the front desk, girl. I can't tell you all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a big help for me, I learned back in the day, call ahead. Find out what the manager's name is or the GM's name, and, and that'll kind of get you past the front desk girl. If it doesn't get past the front desk girl, keep stopping in. Yeah. You know, I, I know one of my accounts, I stopped in for, I don't know, uh, seven, eight months straight. Every week I stopped in. Every week I stopped in. Every week. And it finally got to a point they're like, no, we got your card. I'm like, no, no, you know, look at this card. You know, just trying to keep right. trying to beat it. Right. Um the more you the, the persistence. Every yeah. time you stop in there, stop in there. Get to know the front desk girl. Hey, you see me for 18 weeks. Bring her donuts. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it's just that persistence is what's going to get you in there. Every time he sees your face, who's this guy? Why is he in here? Yeah. You know, I mean, I know you guys went cold calling on some stuff today. Yeah. And, I was and the guy, and the guy's been in there for a long time because he has that relationship, and yeah. that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, it's yeah. that it was, you get you build that relationship, and relationships are only. I think relationships are seventy five percent of the, of the account. Yeah. Truthfully. How, how much do you think it weighs compared to marketing and branding? Because I think you have a different stand. I think we all attack it differently. So what would you say? Uh, I think it's 75%. You know, really, uh, after you build that relationship and you consistently keep that relationship, I think that's yeah. a huge help. I, and when you bring a whole package, you know, and you're rolling up your vehicle's logo and your shirts match, your hats match, your business cards match, your pens, whatever. Right. When you give them that business model or, hey, I need an estimate on a car, and it's not a handwritten estimate. It's a printed out mobile tech RX estimate. Right. Colors match. You know, your headings on there, your tax IDs on there. You're up front. So it's all in, in, in making the professionalism. You know, being a dent guy back in the day, it we used to write everything. <laughs> yeah. Hail estimates. Regular estimates. Invoices. Light-up sheets. Lot work. All that. Everything was written. Yeah. There's so much more you can do with this. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest thing is just getting in there and persistence on knocking on the doors. You get shut down one time, you're like, man, I'm not going back there. That guy wasn't very nice. Yeah. You know, I take, I love it. I truly love getting kicked in the teeth <laughs> for weeks on end. Because at that point, like after the second or third time, you sit back and you're like, this is fun now. Now I'm being a pain in the butt, and I'm just going to keep going in because you know it's just getting underneath the skin. But it's a different angle, right? So yeah. I, I think we're all you know, very good technicians. We can dissect the dent and repair it quite efficiently. But then when we have to actually speak, at least I know for me, it's hard for me to speak sometimes. And I think I started the first time we went, I uh, believe it was the Chevy dealership, and um, I'm – I'm stuttering. Dave stutters for the first time. We get our rhythm, and you know, yeah. after that, we were. We, it's kind of stepping out of our comfort zone what mm -hmm. we do every day, um, which is which is obviously great. Um, and that's like you said, one of the benefits is that, that the fact that they, you know, have that you know seasoned tech that that 11, 10 year tech that they've been doing you know work with. It's kind of crazy how you know a relationship can hold that bond. I think we were speaking about a guy that probably wasn't that good of a technician, but every dealership that we went to, they're like, oh, yeah, we love them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, like, the what? Yeah. Okay. The whole rock. different vibe. We were shocked yeah. with you knowing the guy going, he's yeah. not that great. Okay. All right. 
come from a different angle. Then. <laughs> it's it's that yeah. relationship, man. It it it, it means for me. That's I enjoy pushing dents. I enjoy doing the job and owning my own company, but I really enjoy my accounts, man. I mean, Dave saw today. You walk in there, and the guy's wife's wearing my sweatshirt. Yeah, <laughs> how cool is you know? I didn't tell her, "Hey, Dave, Dave's coming to town. Where my sweatshirt that you paid for? You know, these guys are paying for these shirts, these yeah. sweatshirts. They want them. Want so them. you know, it, it it it's relationships. It means more than anything. Yeah. Not wow. great. We got a a um. A little question we'll like pause a little bit so um does this time of the year slow down uh with work it's come i guess it's pertaining to like winter um for me it slows down but um so i've been here since last wednesday and as of yesterday chicago got hit with about 12 inches of snow um <laughs> so everything's been kind of crazy back home and you know for these but the phone has been bad, you know what I mean? Like the, the phone hasn't been ringing and I know it's due to the severe weather. Um, and these are things that I can't, you know, help. And it's, you know, it's November. It's not even December yet, you know, and it's, we're, last year was kind of weird because it didn't snow almost till end of January, April, or um, January, February, sorry. And so we're seeing that now, this effect now, and it's, um, you know, yeah, we're in winter and it does slow down, you know, not everyone's gonna be fixing their cars um you know fixing at least their dents on their cards in this time of, in this time of uh of the year but i just kind of want to touch on too ryan going back to building the relationship um you said doing the research on the account and mm -hmm. honestly <clears throat> today me and chris uh we were driving down i don't know one of the highways or whatever yeah, there's a, a bunch of dealerships you know there was about five six dealerships there and we hit every single one and me not being from this area, not knowing anywhere compared to what towns I'm near, or, you know, the demographic of the area, anything like that, I did zero research, right? So this for me, I told him, I said, you want me to go in there? Um, and for me, it's because I, I don't, you know, not being from the area, there's no uh, feeling or, you know, that I have, like, if I don't get it, then it's not going to be an issue. Yeah. Uh, but I think doing a little research, instead of asking who's the used car manager, you know, that is a really, really good idea. Just doing a little research on the account first um, to kind of gain a little bit of insight. Who's the service manager? If you see his face and you don't see the used car manager, hey, Joe, uh, where's you know Mike at? You know, he doesn't know you know his name, mm -hmm. but you know the name. And uh, you know, oh yeah, he's in the back he's, or he's in a meeting. Oh, okay, thanks. You know, and next time you go in, he said, how do I know that guy? You know, mm -hmm. we did that. so we didn't do that today. Uh, we didn't do any research. We just, you know, went yeah, in there and tough, we got our yeah. teeth kicked in is what we say. Or, you, know, that's, <laughs> uh, you know, we were pounding the pavement. We were going uh, door to door trying to sell PDR services and every mm -hmm. single one, we got a guy. Um, and I knew that that was going to kind of be the automatic response, right? Oh, so I, yeah. I already prepped myself for that. So what I wanted to do, and <clears throat> said, it's kind of like, all right, now it's on. You know, they kind of would brush me off when I stood there for an extra five to ten seconds and recalled them by their name and because they looked away and turned away. And, okay, thank you. I, I stood there and I said, well, you know, I forget his name, John. John, or, yeah, I think John you know, I just want to say thank you for your time. And once again, if you do need anything, please give us a shout. You know, don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, we've been, you know, we're servicing this area more frequently now, or we're going to be in this area more often. Um, and I'm, and you know. There's a, there was a couple bluffs in there, you know, and there was um, there was one account where I had said, hey, we picked up one of the dealerships down the street. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I'm not from the area, so I don't yeah. know if it's going to affect it or not. But, you know, right. I said, hey, we're going to be in this area more often. So if you do need anything, we just picked up this other dealership that you know, which is technically a competitor of yours. Yeah, so we just like picked them up, and we're going to yeah. be in the PDR yeah. there. <clears throat> they didn't like their guy because they're taking care of their cars. They're using mm -hmm. a superior company. You know, and this is kind of the stigma that I want to give them. Um, as they're taking the literature, the notepads, the cards that I'm giving them, right? So I'm telling them all this, and they it's going in one ear, one ear out the other. Right. But I'm hoping that something kind of sticks, and you know, if there's that one car that can maybe change their mind, or their guy passes on, and or it's the right time where you know that guy passes on that next day and says, "Hey, well, we had another dead guy in here yesterday, ready to go." So mm -hmm. let's give him a call. But that's how you want to leave it. You know, if he can't fix anything, or if he turns down work that you feel as though that it could be fixed with PDR, or if he can't make it out, give us a call. Yeah, and and that that's how I got in. That yeah, exact situation. 
was a repair that really needed a body shop and I spent four hours on it. <laughs> you know, so it, it, and that's the hard thing. It sometimes you I'm in a in a new account now to where it's for me it's very uncomfortable. You know, it's uh you're in that beginning stages of trying to build those relationships and they a lot of the guys like the old dent repair company. So you're getting these looks, these stargazes. I look at you know, today, I looked at Shane and I said, Look at those stargazes. You know, you're just kind of sitting there, everybody's staring at you like, who's this dude? It just takes time. You know, it, it's yeah. physically, you can't go in an account and everybody love you right away. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think in part of building that relationship, yeah. you're building trust as well. So yes, on top of that, you're going to hold yourself accountable. You know, if you're going to say, hey, we're going to be here every week, mm -hmm. be there every week. You're going to be there every day on Monday, be there every day on Monday. If you can't make it, I mean, at least let someone know. Service. Um, you know, or communicate with the with you got to bring that, you know, you got to give that, that, that feeling of, Hey, we're trying to build something here. We want to build a relationship. We want to build trust um, between yes. each other so that, you know, if anything, if you need anything, please give us a call. One thing is you, you want to, if you're a new vendor and you're trying to build that relationship, bend over backwards, you know, really try to make them, make them succeed you know make them stand out say wow th this company's really going beyond so you know speed expectations yeah basically yeah then you're making him look good and yeah. then you're starting to build that relationship and trust and then everybody else starts to follow you know so that's that's the biggest thing in the beginning it's a grind you know there's times yeah. that they're going to call you at 4 30 or 5 o'clock hey i got this dent can you <laughs> you go yeah and you're yeah. in that's all you have to do is just keep trying to just slowly build those relationships and after you're in there usually my third repair in a new account i take donuts coffee yeah. you know give it to the front desk girl give it to the yeah. salesman for, for the account yeah you know, for, for letting them you know that you built that trust and you're now showing appreciation for letting you you know mm -hmm. that, uh, with them and holidays i mean chris i know chris does it too is give gifts you know, I think you did coffee mugs. I did like a, like a tumbler. You know, that those things go a long way. And, and I really think we need to touch on why, um, you know, I think we you said that 75% of your marketing and branding is relationships. It's building mm -hmm. relationships. And, uh, you know, just to go back, you know, I think uh, I'm a little slow. I think we have like one or two appointments a day on average. Uh, I mean, it was raining pretty bad. But Ryan, you just got home. I mean, you're you're pumping every single day. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I did. We just show uh, somebody was talking about saturated market. Ryan, you probably have ten techs in Baltimore. Yeah, we're we're pretty oh. we're pretty competitive. Right. So, you know, that's that's just crazy how how you're still busy, and I think that's what speaks on just building that relationship and why it matters. You can spend countless amount of time in Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Google ads, and honestly, on a retail side of things, people are just not worried about painless dent repair. Yeah. They're worried about what they get their kids for Christmas right now, and it ain't, it's nothing to do with their car. But you know, you cater to more of the dealerships, well, I guess really body shops and dealerships, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which um, kind of works in your favor, especially in this time, because body shops has those cars that are coming from you know accidents mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then when there's something that you can fix and doesn't need to go through that body shop, they go, hey, call this guy to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. so they're already committed. And, uh, you know, so it, it, it's kind of weird how, you know, guys, we're showing you guys what works. You know, Ryan's busy. I'm not. I spend more time on the social side of the advertising. I think me and Dave was just talking about it like two hours ago, how I am. I, I do the YouTube and the social. We run ads. Uh, we run the Facebook ads, all these different ads with videos and all this stuff. But it, you know, in these times, no one's really just looking at the car. Nobody wants to be outside at five thirty. It's literally pitch black outside. Nobody wants to do anything with the car. So, but Brian, on the built those relationship over ten years, and you're still busy. <laughs> I think I, I I really think service is another really big thing with your customer. Right. You need okay. to give outstanding service. Okay. You know, and there's a lot of times I look at my schedule and I'm like, it's totally out of my way. You know, if I could hit them later in the day, it would be easier. They need it now. And I'm just make it happen. A lot of times I'm stepping over a penny 
uh, stepping over a dollar to go get a penny. You know what I mean? There's a lot of times I make trips and I'm like, yeah, this really isn't making sense, but mm -hmm. shut up and just do it. You know? So mm -hmm. sometimes you're doing things. You're like, this doesn't make sense, but you need to look at the long term. You know, I want these accounts for the next 25 years. Yeah. You know, um, I, I see Kevin saying local business clubs, meeting breakfast. Yes. Yeah. The more networking you can do in your local market is the best. Yeah. yeah and I, I told him you do that. Uh, you know, and I you said know. I've been there for one or two of them. Uh, when I came in previously, you, you, yeah. you, you're eating breakfast with either <laughs> other automotive recon or uh -huh. insurance or body shop owners. And yeah. it's crazy to see how all these guys interact because they all help each other out in a certain way and they all know a lot of different people. They all have a lot of different contacts. And, you know, if someone needs something, hey, I got a guy, hey, I got a guy, um, you know, and I've seen the benefits of just a small little <laughs> breakfast that, you know, maybe you only take an hour, 45 minutes, or if you got to go, you know, maybe just grab the coffee, don't get the full breakfast, but at least you're showing yeah. up, you know, with the guys um, yeah. and, you know, either bouncing ideas off or just maintaining those relationships because those are important mm -hmm. as well to, to your business, you know. Now, now, the other thing in this isn't just body shops and, and dealerships. You know, it can be a retail customer too. Mm -hmm. You know, having building a relationship with a customer, doing a great repair, making them happy, and them coming back as a repeat customer. You know, having multiple repeat customers coming back. I have a ton of repeat, re, repeat customers that keep coming back and, um, you know, them telling their friends. And I, I'm sure you have the same thing, Chris. Word of mouth is, is of mouth a is great thing. Very strong. It's, it's people underestimate how powerful that is. Um, and like, I think that's ultimately what you want everybody to do. Your dealerships, your body shop, your customers. You just want them to be, you know, praising how well, you know, your establishment is. And I always say, and I think Ryan, you do the same. Dave, you do the same. It's, it's the bar is not another dent company. The bar is like every service company out there. Mm -hmm. and so you need to make sure that from the scheduling to the quote to everything is seamless for them, for the, for the customer. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get those, 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 uh, pretty much those ambassadors for your company. That, like you have to go there. I don't care if it's a small dent, big dent, you have yeah. to try these guys out first. Um, and and fix their dents personally for free. Yeah. Especially getting a lot of referrals from them. If it's estimators or owners of body shops, they got a dent, fix it. What, what, what does it cost you to fix a dent? Nothing. Right. Yeah. It doesn't cost really? You. Even if you're blue pulling, it's costing you nothing. Yeah. And so I actually, uh, I had a shop contact me uh, late this afternoon um, asking if I was in town. And I said, unfortunately, 17,000 flights got canceled to go home. Uh, so my scheduled time to be home, I'm not unsure if I'm going to be able to be there, but I'll let them know. Oh, okay. Just let us know when you're back. You know, and that's really, really nice to have. Mm -hmm. um, so then I said, hey, I may be there Thursday. Thursday morning, you have two cars. Well, hopefully I can be there Thursday morning and everything goes as planned. Uh, but I just feel that that is awesome that they were, you know, willing to go ahead and, you know, schedule that for later in the week to accommodate even my schedule, which they mm -hmm. don't have to do. I'm just a vendor to this other company, you know, to, to my account, I'm a vendor. Um, and the fact that I built this relationship and it's so strong, and this is a very high volume account for myself um, and for the company. So uh, for them to be able to do that, who can easily, you know, call in, call someone else or get someone in there mm -hmm. you know, really, really quick if they need it. Um, for them to go ahead and go out of the way and, and accommodate my schedule, that's you know sometimes hard to come by. Dealerships aren't going to do that for you. Body shops will maybe you know what I mean. Um, but there's going to be places where if you're not there, they're just going to call someone else. So yeah. you can really build that tight bond uh, with the account. It's going to be huge. Yeah. I think the other thing is just communication. You mm -hmm. need to communicate. If you're not, if it's raining, I mean today we went to my Honda account. It's raining out. I walked in. We were kind of just like Dave's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just seeing if something big stands out. You know what I mean? I'm not squeezing off a uh, hundred cars. Yeah. You're going to miss something. And you also know your inventory. Yeah. You know, you know what cars are there. Dave said, you don't dot your cars. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, but one thing on the, the tip on what you're saying when, with the relationships, when they call you, you were upfront and you were honest with them. I yeah. think they appreciate they that. The town. They had asked when I was going to come back. I told them this day, and I said, but, you know, through the inclement weather, there may be a possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
communication. So, Ryan, um, which I think you're the master of literally relationships and networking, honestly. Um, give us like two examples of how you connect. You, you briefly touched on, you know, finding out maybe they have a little golf club, but just maybe some of uh, the buy shop managers that you can say, hey, this is just a prime example of how I'm connecting with this person. I, I'm not, this is not my hobby, but this is what I've done, maybe in some research or something like that to connect with that person more and, and, and why you chose to connect with that person, you know, if it's a manager or something like that. Maybe. For me, it's so natural, so it's hard to explain. You know what I mean? It just comes naturally. Like like Benny. Benny can be friends with anybody. You know, it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, I think a lot of it's your own personality, how you go in, your confidence. Confidence helped me a lot. You know, when you get to that it's an example. It was an example. Well, viewers, I I know what you're talking about, but I'm trying to get the viewers to understand where you're coming from with this. Like, boom, you're walking into a, uh, a All body right. Shop. So if I walk in to a body shop at a dealer, I walk in, I already know the manager's name. His name's Dave. You go in. What's up, Dave? How you doing today? You know, it's, it's Ryan from RPS Dent Repair. I'm in the area. You know, give him your card. Do you need anything? I'm sure you're using a company. You know, if you are, if there's something he can't fix or he's on vacation, please let me know. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, oh, you're a golfer? We just did 18 holes yesterday. <laughs> oh, where at? You know, when he starts digging is when you've just kind of got to figure it out. Because <laughs> I don't know anything about golf. You know what I mean? Um, or fishing. or that That's the biggest thing is when you are relating with somebody, gives you that little key of opening. So how do you relate? Relate like you don't do golf, but you see a guy has a, you know, putt putt in his office. Like, what would you say? Just, just like I said, is, just watch. like, are you a golfer? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I play at Rolling Road. My uncle plays there all the time, and you know, we okay. do 18 holes, and just kind of fumble through it if you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you'll yeah. see guys that are fishermen, or you'll, you'll see guys with like model cars, and I'm like, man, that thing is awesome. Yeah. What year is that? Just little things just to get you past that uncomfortable hump. Yeah. yeah. When you get past that uncomfortable hump, <laughs> you're good. You know um, what I mean? So, and I'm going to kind of, this isn't the proper way, I think, to, to maybe sell the account. But, you know, I was kind of telling Chris before I went in, and I had learned this from a uh, fellow tech I used to work with. And, you know, he told it to me before, and I thought it was funny. And I said, you know what? This is probably going to be the perfect opportunity. If not the only opportunity, I'm going to be able to use this line, right? Um, and I gave what account that I was going to use this on. And so we walk in and podium and the guys up there and they're all laughing, which was nice already. So I have a smile on my face because they're laughing. So I'm trying to mimic their body language off the bat. Um, plus I'm going into something nervous and I'm just smiling, right? And so they're all there. And as soon as I walk up, they all kind of stop, right? And then they all just, you know, give you the, like, what do you want type thing? And so I, I bluntly said, who's in charge of making the cars look pretty? <laughs> you know, and they all kind of looked at me and they're like, what? I said, well, who's in charge of all the used cars or uh, automotive reconditioning? Oh, well, that's so-and-so. And I've already thrown them for a loop. So they're not yeah. already, they're not trying to kick me out because they're trying to figure out what I just said. Yeah. And it's kind of a funny, so they don't really know if they should laugh because they're, you know, a lot of them try to play hard ass and I don't know. You know, they're like, funny. Dave, go home and take a bath with your bath bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, they try to play hard ass, and I'm just like, <laughs> who's in charge of making the cars look pretty, you know? And I'm kind of trying to give them that rough, uh, you know, feeling that they're going to give me and that I know that they're going to give yeah. me. So, and, um, but you're you know, speaking with confidence, though. Because yeah. you did it when we were, when, when uh, we went kind of cold calling or whatever. It was like confident. And I think a guy laughed and was like, yeah, it should be him. <laughs> you know? So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so. <clears throat> So it's a little joke, you know what I mean? And, and it's kind of coming off a little rough, I guess, rough, you know, rough around the edges, not as professional. Um, but this is me just trying to use another tactic, you know, and it's something yeah. that I was really comfortable with. There was one account where I'm speaking to the guy, and I think this actually happened on the show not too long ago. And, and, you know, sometimes I do lose my train of thought, but I just, like, completely stuttered over my words. <laughs> and he's looking at me like I have a condition. And, <laughs> You know, I'm like, and I said, let me pause, let me backtrack. 
And I had to take a breath and I kept going and I almost reeled him back in with this weird situation that just happened again. You know, this is at another account and he's looking at me like, you know, something. he ended up taking the card and it sat right there and he put the little uh, notepads or whatever yeah, we had maybe. on the desk. And, um, you know, and then I, I always try to finish it. Please, if you do need anything, do not hesitate to give us a call. Yeah. Um, you know, we are in this area very frequently. Uh, Chris does offer some mobile service, so that's what I, you know, I did say, and I, you know, I said I was with Deathless Touch, and uh, we're here in the area now. We're we're building up this area. We're servicing a couple of these places down the street, um, and kind of like I said, bluffing a little bit, you know, uh, to let them know that we're here, you know, and that we're going to be kind of pounding this pavement a little bit more, and you know, for the competition that may be in that area, you know, they not they may not know where, you know, like if. If Ryan has a good account, someone's telling Ryan that someone came in there. So these accounts may be telling their guy, hey, someone came in here. But that doesn't mean that doesn't leave an opportunity for if that guy slips up, you know, you're there. You're right there on his heels, ready to go if something does happen. So, you, you know, you kind of keeping that guy on his toes if he's gotten complacent, you know, for a long time. So um, you never know what could actually happen. Yeah. When sure. you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to build these relationships, when you're trying to cold call um and i mean i think like what it boils down to is when you're doing any face-to-face -face interaction it's literally you're trying to create a friend you want to be that that person's friend um i think we always constantly try to sell something i think ryan just dropped off hopefully he didn't but uh i think we're always trying to sell something and we get into this mode of we're better use us and this that and the third and just by talking with Ryan and talking to you guys, it's like really you have to focus on like how can I, how can this conversation be an enjoyment for both parties? Screw the dent. He's yeah. gonna ask, well, what the hell do you do? What, what do you do? Oh, you do dance. I think we had one account that said that we were talking and <clears throat> they finished doing his spill and actually we started chatting with the gentleman and then he's like. Yeah, you do. Like, he literally was not, he was going to throw our car in the trash. Like, mm -hmm. guaranteed he was going to throw our car in the trash. He's like, you know what? I'll hang on to this. And I'm like, you weren't going to hang on to it? You told us nope. you were. And he's like, nah, man. I, you know what? If we got a call, I'll let you know. And he put it in his pocket instead of his desk drawer that's going to get lost with all the million cars that come in. So, you know, stand out, but also just create that bond with that person. And I think what Ryan said, I don't know if we were on the air or not, is, just relentless, you know, every week you're talking to the same person. He sees you coming in. He's going to throw you something. If you come in there every week it's and it's going to be crap. Yep. You're going to, your first car is going to stink. <laughs> and it's going to be for free. Man. Yes. You pretty much should charge. Free. You try to charge what you, what is worth. Good luck. <laughs> so. um, the other thing is never discredit who you meet at some of these accounts. Yeah, and, and what I mean by that is, you meet the like I said before the the guy that works in service. You never know in five years he could be the manager. Yeah. You never know. You oh. never know if if this manager at this account leaves and goes to the Ford account down the street and says he's new at that account, and he's like, "Oh, I, I, that that dentless touch guy." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a you never know that knew us, which is crazy. I don't know if it was a bluff or not. He said we knew him, but I yeah, also said like, I knew his dent guy too, but I didn't. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> he but, was like, Y'all do good work, I know you guys. I'm like, All right, we'll get us in awesome. here. What the <laughs> you know, and actually, I touching on Ryan, you know, I've also seen him not within the show, I've seen it with the other vendors at Ryan's, yeah. like, the, at, like the wheel guy, like yeah. or the, the bumper guy who picks oh, up yeah. the plastic bumpers, like, he knows. The other people that aren't even at the account, but like also service. But so I guess the other vendors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause know. they're going to tell you too, if somebody else is on your lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen him build these relationships, these guys, and it's, you know, it's kind of crazy the way you do that. Right. I, I don't know if it's just your good looks, your charm or what it is, but it's definitely um, good looks, <laughs> you know, but I, I, I noticed the, the smiles that happen when Ryan mm -hmm. walks into a shop and it's not just from the accounts. It is also from the other services that are there too. It's um, like break time when Ryan comes in. It's like break time with Ryan. Like I will, <laughs> like the people will like, nah, screw lunch. Ryan's here, so I'm gonna socialize with Ryan's on my lunch break. <laughs> screw my lunch. Like I only get an hour, but I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> and, 
and the owners hate it. And the owners are like, get back to work. It's just Ryan the dead guy. It's like, you don't have to worry about anything. I can literally walk in and show I'm the better better than Ryan, and Ryan can sign the back of it. He, there's no way they're even calling me. It's no way. <laughs> so um, we had a few questions here. I want to go back. Yeah, to and, so, and, and one thing, guys, too. So, you know, you're building a relationship, right? This is going to be over time. Um, so we're you know we're kind of mixing it all up. It's cold calling, and once you get the account, now you have to maintain the account. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, building that relationship is also maintaining it. Um, you know, and it's important, I think, to once you have the account, to not take it for granted, right? So when things yeah, are going, oh my gosh, yes, yeah. sure, calling yeah. you all the time, and you know, those are the times you really need it. Kind of go that little. Do you guys need anything else? Do you guys, uh, you know, is there anything else I can do? Because um, you want to show them that you genuinely want the best for, you know, the best job you can do for that account. So when it's going good, you know, those are times you want to really, uh, how do you, you know, step your game up. Yeah. It's crazy because, uh, before you came in and I picked you up, I, um, I was, I walked into one of our dealerships that wasn't really calling us. Uh, I was like, ah, it's been like two months since we didn't work. Keep saying that they're, they don't have a lot of cars. So I stepped in there, talked to the guy, his name was Leroy. I said, hey, what's going on? He kind of says, oh yeah, we're all right. I said, how's the inventory, how's business? Just small talk. And uh, I said, what's going on? You haven't really called us, oh, we got a new manager. And I said, I understand that, but you still got damaged cars out there. What's, what's going on? He's like, well, we got a new guy and he does touch up. And I started to think, not his fault. We do touch up too. We have the kit. We, you know, we can do it. We just don't really lean on it as much as some guys. But I, you know, I, I had to stop. I'm like, well, you never asked. But I'm like, you know what? I never suggested to let's do some touch up on your on your on your cars and roll it into one shop. So we almost lost. Technically, you know, today we almost lost that account. If I didn't go in there, and if I didn't realize the problem was he needed a guy that also does touch up, we would have lost that account. And so, and that's three three dealerships. So you know, when you lose one out of the three, you know, it's almost like a ripple effect. So that could have that could have been three accounts that we were lost just just from not being like you said, uh, you maintaining. know, maintaining them and making sure that they don't need anything else that you possibly can service or at least find a guy in there to just help their search a little easier. Um, so. We, you know, we all fail at it. <laughs> never, never sit back and, and just because you have a strong relationship, think that somebody else can't get in there. Yeah. Right? You know, always. Yeah, I mean, even today, you know, so hey, we've been using 13 years. Well, we're still here knocking on the door, too. Yeah, it happens every day. If you think nobody's coming in your accounts dropping cards, you're wrong. Yeah, yep. every day. And so even, you know, we did that, we did that and uh, we're driving down the road, and I said, hey, Chris, throw out that. And it was like a limo spot, and I'm actually going off a of push and polish here. Uh, he says, "Don't stop at body shops and car. Don't just stop at body shops and car dealerships. Tractors and heavy equipment dealers, motorcycle dealers, business with a fleet of vehicles." So we're passing by this limo place, and I said, "Hey, what about there? You know?" And because I used to, there was one point in my life where yeah. I was servicing like a, a fleet of oh, like, limos, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was like party buses, and it was mostly just high spots. And <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> how they would happen, but. Uh, on the sides of the cars, but you know, it was a limo service that I would do, and they would call, you know, every couple of weeks, and they'd have, like, something on the big minivans, mm -hmm. and then something on the Crown Vic, and then something on the Lincoln. And so he turned around, he made a nice U turn, we stopped in and say, Hey, here you go. Yeah, oh, yeah, sometimes we need stuff. All right, cool. You know, don't hesitate mm -hmm. to give us a shout. So, push and polish that's a really, really good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, tractors, heavy equipment dealers, motorcycle dealers, business with a fleet of vehicles, uh, and car rental places. Yeah. I love going to the motorcycle bill. It's such nice. We don't we don't do an MPDR, you know we don't do motorcycle city. Uh, but I do know that you yeah, we do offer it. that service. Yeah, we offer it. And so it's nice. I'll send them pictures. Oh, okay, okay. And some of the guys he knows. I don't know, it's pretty it's pretty cool when I go to the Harley Davidson shops. I love actually going to it, so. I don't even ride. Maybe maybe one day in my life I I'll get a bike. No way. My wife is like, nope, ours, four wheels only. So, um, so I think, you know, we have about 20 minutes left. RV dealership. Uh, we should go so. through, you know, some of these questions. Uh, push and polish ads, should my prices uh, on the retail side fluctuate with the slower season? <clears throat> I think that's just a business decision. I think, I mean, I do. My prices are lower. I offer discounts just to get people in the door. I mean, that's just, 
I think that's just common business sense in a way. I mean, ideally, you have no business if you have no revenue. Correct. So, I mean, that's just my perspective. Yeah, I, mean, I can't say that I, I, you know, consciously make them fluctuate or go lower. Um, but I think there are instances where I maybe wouldn't, you know, price it as high um, if I was busier. You know what I mean? Or yeah, I, I, yeah. I, Supply and demand. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and you know, actually, I think you kind of learned that almost from Paul Ford and we were you know, working <laughs> in college or something where mm -hmm. you know I knew I was super busy and I was kind of you know price it like you don't want it, right? <laughs> yeah. And some of them were stuck, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Which means yeah, that's the that I maybe had you know a, yeah. a barrier with of pricing, and I priced it like I didn't want it. I ended up getting it like, oh, so I can't go that high, or you know, yeah. you can't push the limits of what we do, you know, at least in the pricing side. Yeah, give them the give them the I don't want to fix a price. Yeah, but I mean going into winter now or being in winter now, um, I can't say that I consciously um, lower the prices. Um, but that I, you know, them fluctuating, you know, I think they will. I think they're gonna yeah, just fluctuate just, more. Yeah. Because you don't, you know, I think you're gonna be taking more bad on or you know, taking the good with the bad more. Um, you know, maybe taking jobs on that you wouldn't before. Especially if you're newer too, those are opportunities to where you can take on those bigger jobs, especially in the winter. You know, maybe you know under promise and over deliver. Of course, That's you know, on practice really and get, you know on the bigger damage, the larger damage. There was a question someone had. You know, what do you do when you have an account and you're too busy to do the big stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, it, somebody else is knocking in the door. How'd you get the account? Same thing, you know. If you if it's smashed, if you can fix it, you're gonna have to fix it. It's part of the deal, you know. When you when you pass that stuff, yeah. I mean, you just open up the door, like you said. George right? George down the street's gonna come in and say, "Let me fix that fender for free." Boom! Now you got another guy. Yeah. I mean, you could try it, but I pick up most of my accounts during hail time. That's when I go out and I just right on the tail end. Ryan, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Right on the tail end, I pick up most of my accounts when all the guys are just trying to get that next hail car, and I'm like, all right, I'm getting all into your dealerships because you haven't been there in, you know, four to five, six weeks. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, yeah, that's the problem. You need to call us. So um, there was another question about, I, I believe um, Push and Polish was saying that he may not be him, but he goes into his accounts with his price guy like right there. Do you do that? Do you negotiate? No. Is everything different? Nope. I, I don't do that, but I do have a booklet that if they're interested, I can go over with them. And the way I do it is I ask them how many cars. I say, okay, let me get a better understanding of how many cars you actually move per, per month. Uh, so I call it, I believe, um, what is it? How many deliveries or something? I can't remember yeah. the terminology. Um, and then I put them in a bracket. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, they, you know, they say, oh, hundred, which you know, that's probably escalated. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know. So I say, oh, okay, so you're in between the fifty and hundred. So that brings us down to the lower tier. You'll be at, at this range, generally where we'll be at, at about once a week or every ten days. We'll come and 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 look at your lot. And then you know, obviously, they strive to you know maybe do better or kind of know that we have other packages for the three to four hundred car dealerships that we do. And you don't, you know, you don't need to see that because you're not at that level. Kind of brings them down to earth a little bit because a lot of times when you go into these these uh, dealerships, the used car used car salesman is on this cloud nine, yeah. and you got to realize, dude, you only sell thirty cars a, a a month, and that's not a lot. It's not that impressive. Yeah. So you kind of got to use that, you know. Yeah. You're able to only sell it yeah maybe. maybe. <laughs> but you got to say, okay, at this price, at this time, you know, no problem. This is a this this is kind of generally time and the price is the same it's the same price really so they don't know that but we're trying to get a better understanding of how many units do you actually move but that's going to tell me how many time how many uh, days out of the week i need to show up a lot of our other clients you have these packages right you know you're right letting them know that hey it's okay to let them know that they're not the only one that is using you right so yeah. you can and let that's them know we're doing, yeah. yeah you're kind of not pinning you know these dealerships against each other but hey this is what we're doing you know these guys really really like us they're mm -hmm. doing, you know, now you're not telling them numbers or anything, but they're moving a lot more. And so you're actually yeah. more in this bracket here of what we're able to actually I tell do. them a range because I'm like, hey, the, the coons up the street is doing between three and 400 units. So that requires, you know, pretty much every day. 
a guy there every day. Um, is that something that you'd be interested in? Oh no, we probably do about a hundred. I'm like, okay, so that's once a week. Yeah. I kind of understand, you know, hundred units once a week. When did your delivery come in? Boom. And he tells me the delivery when it's there the day after, by the time you check it in, or does it take a few time a few days to go through the service lane? And uh, then you want us to uh, prepare the cars. Which what do you prefer? If you're if you're getting in the pricing, your foot's halfway in the door. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Fifteen prices X. Hmm. All right, so we got a bunch of questions here. Dave, do you okay? What blim tool uh, did you highly recommend last week? Uh yeah. Oh, Dave's pulling it up for you. So Push and Polish is asking about uh, about the large damage. How important is your count, that account versus your next appointment? Um, it, a lot of times, if it's something I don't think I can get done and my, my appointments are crazy, I'll come back that night and do mm -hmm. it. Or tomorrow, come back tomorrow, it, but it would be the next morning. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, and you learn your accounts, you know, you're going to learn what accounts you can lean on or kind of push a little bit cause your relationship's good or, you know, you learn how to work around that. But you know, a lot of times push the polish, it's yeah. not always about making more money long-term, you know, you, you kind of just need to guard what you have. Um, you, you can't always it's not always about it, it sounds crazy that i'm saying this but it's not always about making money you look at the end end thing so that dent may be 200 bucks and you're like man it's smashed for 200 bucks but you're getting forty thousand out of them for the year so you know that that makes a big difference there so don't leave anything untouched that's for sure yeah i, I agree with you um Push and Polish did, or David or somebody was asking me about the recommended tool for Blim. I have the hail set for Blim. They're like um, the straight shaft um, PDR hand tools. They have a, a, a left and a right. Um, Dentcraft sells the same tool. I believe it's different metal. Blim's metal is a little bit stronger, so I recommend getting the Blim. The price difference is crazy. I think it's double the price, so you got to um, you gotta uh, decide on that. Um, but the tool that I recommend that was a door tool was the Drew's tool that you have. And so, what which one is that one? It's the Drew's tools, they call it the ADT, it's just adjustable door tool, right? Um, they have two sizes. So, I have the smaller version, I really still, and I think I've said this like 20 episodes yeah. ago, and I yeah. never got it. It's an expensive tool, I mean, I'm yeah. not gonna lie, it's made its money back tenfold. Um, but it's the Drew's Tools Adjustable Door Tool. I will pull up on uh, the link real quick yeah. so, off of that. So I just wanted to correct Dave. I didn't recommend a blend door tool. I do have the tool that Dave just linked. Uh, it's a great tool. Um, but that Drew's Tool, and I believe the competitor, I believe, is the PDR Finesse Tool. 245. Uh, yeah, the 245. But they weren't running a sale. Uh, I believe that's what you're talking about. They weren't running sales, and Drew is running sales. So, so Kevin's asking, do you ever get paid by the insurance companies? Does it? Does getting paid by the insurance company take a long time? Nope. Usually not. Um, Three days, maybe. Like travelers, I'm ENT, which is almost their electronic trans money transfer. So, um, <clears throat> it, it's really not that bad. Yeah, don't let that scare you because I think Caliber now has the same type of uh, paying scale now. I think when you go into body shops, Ryan, you can correct me wrong. You do probably just as amount of body shops. I do over like 40 body shops, guys, and I don't think there's a single body shop. There may be one or two that pays me right after I do the repair. Every last one of them on, on, the, net, on the net 30. I get a lot of checks. <laughs> uh, per day? Yeah. Get I, that money. I just cannot wait. Why they, oh, let me see. Let me look it up. And yeah. Got money on it. Yeah. Some of my smaller stuff, I mean, hey, they're going to give me the check. I'm going to take it. <laughs> you know, get it um, while you can. The 226s, do you both have those? Or yes. The 245. 245. The 226s 
are right and left and it kind of has a tip that's kind of bent and sharp mm -hmm. um that 226 tool i call it the camaro tool i use it on camaro doors all day long uh, all day yeah. long nice mm -hmm. But it's very hard to use it in a lot of the doors. Nissans, you can't use it. Toyotas, you can't use it. Hondas, you can't use it. it it's hard to get inside that upper brace. It, a lot of times if that brace is wide, it, it won't let you get the tool down inside there. So it's a very limited tool um, for like some of my new guy. My new guy, that won't be a tool that I purchase him at, in, this, in the kit that I'm putting together for him. It's just not – I don't use it enough. Right. Nice. But that two four five, they also make a two point uh, two four five S, which is the short model that I want to get. So, um, but that two four five is a beast. That tool is um, awesome, amazing. Yeah, they. I don't think they had any sale. They may have some sale, but uh, that's the tool you have to get. I got them all. I got like five of them bad boys with all my guys. So that's the tool to get. Now, um, do you need to register somehow to? Work? Work with and bill insurance companies. Not really. Um, if you're if you're doing a repair, a lot of times they're going to ask for the tax ID number. number. Don't which, call you and ask. Which if you're using Mobile Tech RX, it's actually on the top of the invoice. I don't know if you can actually remove it, but I'm just running the standard profile invoice, and it has your tax ID number on top of the. So I always, you know, I don't. Did you even know that, Ryan? What the the tax ID in the Mobile Tech RX? Yeah, yeah. yeah. on the top of the invoice. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been like six months, and I was like, oh, God, it's on there. You have it. Um, push the polishes. What about becoming a preferred vendor for insurance companies? It's very difficult for small companies. Um, I know State Farm just put out a big email saying that there were three vendors that they use, and they have to use them. Um, so I had a lot of my accounts calling me saying, hey, uh, I'm going to send you an email. Tell me what you think. And I read the email, and I'm like, okay. Well, you do realize that direct repair that you sign says you can use whatever vendors or part suppliers you'd like. That's a business decision on your end. Yeah. So don't let that scare you, but it's very difficult to be a preferred vendor for the insurance company unless you're a nationwide company. Great information, man. Yeah, that's yeah. nothing tough. I get a little mixed up sometimes or even kind of uh, have to take a deep breath when they're calling because, you know, talking to them uh, – <clears throat> insurance companies sometimes yeah. can be a little uh if they don't know what they're doing or you know they're asking for information that you don't know especially if you're newer to starting your company sometimes it can be overwhelming and you have to watch out with the rental they don't cut somebody's rental off quick so mm -hmm. when you talk about the days you need to repair you got to think of when that customer's going to pick up if you'll be done at five o'clock and you know on a friday they ain't picking up five o'clock on a friday they're gonna pick up monday night so yeah your car will be done monday night because if not, they'll cancel that uh, rental on that customer, and then that customer is going to be yelling at you, not the insurance company, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's, that's one thing that I always tell my guys. Give yourself three to four days for customer pickup. Build relationships with insurance adjusters, too, in your local market. Yeah. It makes life really easy. Yeah, we uh, get body shops, all kinds of Oh, stuff. yeah. And a lot of times it helps with supplements. You know, they'll, we'll be at a shop and they're like, well, I'm waiting on so-and-so insurance company. And I'm like, are you talking about Dave? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, Bing. hey, Dave, are you working on the car? Yeah, just do it and bill it at the end. You know what I mean? That's the relationships you need to build that help you move on. And those are the relationships, as you guys can see, Ryan has. Where yeah. You can just call the adjuster <laughs> and he said, yeah, go ahead, just do it. You know, and that's just over time. He's built stuff. He's maintained the, the relationships. He's asked about their kids if they have anything, in the water bottle, whatever. Um, you know, he's built and maintained and, and these relationships and be able to say, hey, yeah, go ahead and put it on the bill or do whatever you need to do, you know, for an insurance adjuster. Uh, you know, for someone like myself, I don't have those contacts like that. You know, uh, I have a couple of adjusters that I deal with, but it isn't, yeah, go ahead and do what you need to do. You know, and, and Ryan has built that to where that trust is there, and they trust him to be able to do the right thing. I know that he's going to do the right thing. Yeah. All right, quick question. You uh, you gave away some shirts, or you sold some shirts. How many shirts did you sell? Uh, usually springtime, I give away three cases of T-shirts. How many in three cases? How many? Uh, 77 in each case. Okay. So almost about, what, 200? Yeah. Um, and then I usually make a run of hats. 
and this stuff's expensive. I'll I'll give the t-shirts away. Hats are a little more expensive because I buy a quality hat. Um, and then sweatshirts. Select people that ask throughout the year. I'll 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 say, okay, hey, you know, I'm running some sweatshirts, and I just sell them to them what I'm paying for them. Mm -hmm. it, it, at 25 or 30 bucks a piece it's just expensive you know yeah that's part of that branding well oh, i can't wait till we get into those branding topics Whew. that's gonna be that's gonna be nice there is uh do we have any other questions before we head out here guys do you have the stand line or long neck is that one yes i do have the stand line along the straight line said so the stand line and long neck is a great door tool mm -hmm. um it's a bit long for the top of the door i just don't mm -hmm. know if you that's one of the ones. It's have. not as thin as as I would like it to be honest. Um, if we're talking about the same tool, I may have to Google it real quick mm -hmm. just to see if we're talking about that because I have all of them now. Um, but if you guys haven't done so yet, MTE is right around the corner, um, and yes. we do recommend you know you guys check it out if you have to be there. Um, you know, there's a lot of information. You can see a lot of these tools that you're looking at online. Uh, you can actually hold them in your hands, try them out. Um, you know, it's a couple days long, so if you can maybe, maybe you have to drive or something like that. But, you know, it is an option for people um, if in Orlando, Florida. So it well, is going to be a little different this year. It's one building, right? It's going to be a little different. Um, <clears throat> so the venue that they picked this year, uh, MT was bought last year um, by a different company. And this year it it's just like an average convention center to where you're using a union um it's 400 and some dollars a pallet to bring tools in so some of these smaller companies um are teaming up with some of the larger companies so you're going to see some some cross contamination some of these companies having multiple vendors in one booth or a larger vendor having a company you didn't know was working with that company so it's going to be a little bit different and there may not, some of the vendors may not be there because of the cost. Right. You know, it's going to be a little different. I didn't know that. That's, I, I even talked to um, Matt from get a grip and he said he would be there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So hopefully there's not much of an issue on that one. Is anybody going to the world cup in Missouri? I just saw that. I was actually, showing ryan that i think yesterday or two days ago i had no clue i've been hearing about it but i just kind of yeah i had no clue uh it's it's in like a week or two so i can't say i'm gonna be attending since i'm here no. um it is only uh like a, actually it's an eight hour drive i thought it was gonna be closer but it's actually uh, it's not, if it was up in st louis or on there it's like a four hour drive but it's actually yeah. for four to the bottom of missouri so um i will not be there. but yeah, i was i just found out about it actually like three days ago I think I think I, is that the same thing as like I mean guess they're the doing almost like a like a they're doing like a dental Olympics yeah. Yeah. kind of like a mini you know dental Olympics or that's the the vibe I got from the um, from the flyer so from the mm -hmm. website. Um, Trent says show us how to write a good estimate and supplement. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna take that and put it in our topic list. Um, so we yeah. can you know definitely get you that information. Um, yeah, I know I have a video of writing an estimate. I don't know how detailed I, I was. Was this with Mobile Tech RX as well? This is with Mobile it's Tech great. RX. Um, I think the video is roughly about three to four months old. Um, I didn't submit a supplement. I think Mobile Tech RX has great options for supplement where you can actually have the, the original price and the supplement price. A lot of times I just rewrite the estimate and match the supplement, but I think a lot of guys are now using the supplement option and just recently, you can actually import this to CCC now, and I believe you have to buy credit um, to do that. So I don't know how much the credits are or any of that stuff. I don't even know, I didn't even know that feature was available through Mobile Tech RX. But um, if any of your, um, I think a lot of body shops, the dealerships, if you can import it straight to CCC, that may be another avenue into a body shop that they don't have to sit there and rewrite your your estimate that you hand them. So, um, and then CCC is, 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 what do they call it? What's the, um, what does the abbreviation actually stand for? I don't think there is a breakdown. It used to be uh, Pathways was the name of it, and then it went to CCC, and then it went to CCC1. So basically, CCC <clears throat> is software that it 
insurances, insurance companies and body shops use to write their collision repairs. And there's a couple different ones. You have CCC, Autotex, mm -hmm. Mitchell, Mitchell um, yeah. Rome. I mean, there's a bunch of little, littler companies. And, and all the insurance companies use different platforms, so it gets a little crazy. Around and, here, I know a lot of body shops that use CCC. Like, that is the industry standard. Yeah. So a lot of the insurance companies use Mitchell and Autotex. Yeah. Okay. And there's no actual abbreviation. Uh, it's a total repair, uh, repair platform. Um, it combines estimating, shop management, and DRP performance in one simple So that's why they probably use CCC because of the, the, the management. And perform, showing the performance. So, right. um, so yeah, that's what CCC is. So, yeah. so a lot of times when you go to a body shop, you write an estimate, they say, hey, I need you. You write an estimate for a health car. They literally take your estimate line by line and uh, and word it in a way that they can submit it to you know the insurance company from being a DRP. They just can't submit our our uh, our estimate. It's just it's not in that in that format for them. So if you can say, hey, I can give you the format that fits CCC, that may be an avenue. Of like, all right, great. I don't have to pay <laughs> my office staff to sit there and uh, you know translate your your estimate into you know, what we need. Yeah. I think you also have to look at how much those credits are, you know, what it's yeah. going to cost, if it's cost effective for you to do it that way. Yeah. You I know. mean, I don't know how, yeah. I mean, but if you're doing a bunch of hail cars and maybe they just require it, I mean, it's a good option to have. I, mean, I think the other thing with that thing with Mobile Tech RX is importing a CCC estimate to Mobile Tech RX also. Oh, that may be an option. I may have the read conversion. it. So no, you, I think it does both. Okay. That's good. Any other questions we have? I got to look into that, Ryan, because I literally, when they did their Black um, Black Friday sale, they were talking about these credits. Mm -hmm. I, you know, obviously, this is not something that they were offering, you know, a couple of months ago. So it has to be just like a new feature that's coming out. If you guys are not on Mobile Tech RX, they are coming out with features. I think they're steamrolling this stuff now. Uh, we were talking to one of the owners, and he's now uh, should be full time. Oh, after the after the first, mm -hmm. he's now full time. So they're coming out with videos, and I mean, it's going to be a nice, nice platform uh, for all people, from detailers to you know, paint guys, wheel guys, and even dent guys. So yeah, you can check out one of our yeah, older definitely. episodes. A couple episodes ago, we had. Um um john john from mobile tech mm -hmm. rx on the show and so if you guys haven't checked it out check it out um it's a great platform for us as painless and repair technicians mm -hmm. um it's great for your companies if you are the business owner as well um sure. he was on there like chris said explaining a lot of new features coming out so yeah and some of them you couldn't even tell and you know you didn't want to uh let us know but man he is some new stuff coming out <laughs> And, and I did, you know, honestly, they didn't say anything was going to raise on the price. And they're just constantly updating uh, as much as they can. Um, do you guys use a car reader? What do you use, Ryan? Dave, you think you just said square? Pay anywhere. Pay anywhere. Okay. I use Intuit. Um, three different ones right there. Yeah, that's three. Uh, does yours uh, work with uh, QuickBooks? Yes. Uh, Ryan, QuickBooks? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about the fees? What are you at? Two point two percent. Yeah, it's not. It's like two. Yeah. I'm two point four. I think I am. Yeah, two point something. something. Like that. Okay. How often does your money go in your bank? Because I know that sometimes an issue. Quick. I mean, next, next day. day. Ryan, next day. day or two. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't take long. Holidays, uh, it'll you know. Yeah, quick. Quick. Uh, into it is three to four days, depending on weekends. It doesn't really go as fast. Yeah. But uh, and holidays, but business days, it's like two days. Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, anything else? In the show, we're trying, David. We're trying, man. We're on episode forty-two now. Hey, we're almost at a year. <clears throat> anything else? We don't want to miss anybody's questions before we close up. Anything else, guys? We'll wait for everybody to any, anybody to respond. Um, if you guys have any topics, I believe my email is in the um, description, guys. Uh, we do have a long list of topics that me, Dave, and Ryan have been um, going through. 
But we always like to pull some topics that you guys want to uh, want us to discuss. Um, so if you guys, uh, you know, have any, just use the link, uh, the email address below. And just make sure that it's there. And it's not there. <laughs> so I will put my email address in the description right now. And you can email me. Uh, email me when you, um, you have any topics. Any well, topics? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Definitely. If you, uh, if you do have anything, shout. Uh, Dave from Winter City Dive Repair. I will be back home next week, so you will see me there and not here. So <laughs> uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah, Snapchat. You on Snapchat now? Yeah, <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Which, uh, the, the main three. Dave's a snapper. <laughs> yeah, personal snapper. Yeah. Chris, uh, right, uh, Ryan, you want to go? RPS Dent Repair, all the social media. Trying to grow my YouTube, so check it out. RPS Dent Repair, or RPS Dent Specialist. Coming we out, got like so two new videos this week. I'm pumping it, so I can't wait. It's exciting. Yeah. <clears throat> got that beta, uh, was it beta, beta? Yeah, the beta tool card. The beta tool card, guys. It's yeah. a pretty expensive tool card, so if you're thinking about getting it. I think it's inexpensive. I mean, it's like 500 bucks, right? 500 bucks. It's yeah, a lot. It's expensive for a card now. That's like a TDN card. At least you can have a TDN card. I did tell yeah. her. I'm like, I mean, you more bucks, you can get a TDN. There's a TDN card for sale <laughs> used for like 400 bucks. And I'm thinking about selling mine for $400, guys. That thing is heavy as crap. I could not lift that anymore. I'm about to go back to my little plastic, little 10-pound uh, card and be done with it. So, Awesome, guys. <laughs> Thank you. We really appreciate you guys watching as well. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.